Travel has changed. Today, I'm going to fly what was the world's best business class. How has it been affected and is it still on top? Let's find out. Good morning and welcome to Germany. Starting in a slightly different place today. We're currently in Ham. Now we're gonna catch a train over to the airport because as you know from the title of this video, we're gonna be trying out the world's best business class. Got my bag packed. This is all I'm taking on this trip over to, well, let's find out, shall we? Let's get the train and crack on. Now arrived at Dusseldorf Airport. We need to go through security and head over to board on Turkish Airlines. This is the, I suppose, the precursor to the main part of the trip. We have to get to Istanbul to take our flight on the world's best business class. Computer, laptop, tablet, iPad, and liquids. And liquid. Duty free is open here in Dusseldorf. The shops do, of course, look pretty empty, but. They are all open. Now, one thing I do not know is if there is a lounge. It doesn't say on my boarding pass there should be one, but we're flying business. Oh dear. Well, that looks like a no. <laughs> Here we are. Um, this is the Turkish Airlines A330 that today we are flying over to Istanbul. A little bit of confusion, of course, because I am only transiting Istanbul, so they weren't quite sure what was going on. It's a problem with these trips when you're reviewing flights and doing loads of different things. It does get a bit confusing. Right, let's get on board. It seems, as you can see, pretty quiet. And I am 4J, I think, which is here. How do you guess this is the captain's Getting set up into my seat, it's also quite evident that the flight is pretty quiet in business class. Not so much in economy, but as you can see the different seats that you get here. We've got it in a 2-2-2 two, two, two configuration. Of course, legroom is pretty good. It would be bad if you were stuck when, on your own like me today, and somebody came to sit next to you. It wouldn't be quite as private. <laughs> So we're now airborne, um, going to be another interesting one, much like the experience I had with Iberia, got into trouble for filming. They claim it's a safety concern, read into that what you will, but I will do my best to try and document the experience I have been offered so far. Today you get a list of beverages that you can have, some wines, there is alcohol, one red wine, one white wine, a beer some apple juice. Bearing in mind, let me just precursor this with the fact that generally speaking, Turkish Airlines have one of the best food services in the sky. It's quite interesting to see that it's been massively depleted. In terms of what else I've got, I've been provided with a box. There's basically a sandwich, there's a sandwich, like a croissant with cheese, uh, some yogurt. Quite limited to be honest, although I suppose it's not that bad for a three and a half hour flight, but it's obviously not what you'd usually get incredible food by Doe & Co. Overall, it's relatively bare bones and basic. Uh, it's a little bit different to what I expected and I'm confused at why they're very anti-filming. Welcome to Istanbul. That was a pretty quick flight to be fair. I think that was about two and a half, two hours, 45 minutes. So here is the interesting bit. Over there is France there. They've got to go through security again, right? But obviously I haven't got my ticket yet. So I've got to basically check in online for my flight tomorrow. Hopefully it works. I seemed to be a little bit concerned about it when I left Dusseldorf. Well, that was utter madness. I had to go to the transfer desk. See, my final destination is going to be back in Germany. They were like, why are you going from Dusseldorf to Istanbul, then transferring to Doha and then back to Germany? Long story short, I've got a short transfer pass to allow me to go to my hotel. Wow, you need to check this out. Just checked in to the Yotel Air. Now, I'm not leaving the airport because it messes up my future travels. I can't effectively enter Turkey at the minute, so I'm in transit. I'm able to enter Turkey, but I've chosen not to just because it could cause problems for my travels next week to the rest of Europe. What I was gonna show you guys is how cool this hotel room is. I mean, we're in the airport, so literally you can walk out and you're in the terminal. And then, yeah, bathroom. What do we get in here? Do we get a little rainfall shower? Yeah, it's cute. 
I need to explain to you in a minute exactly what the sort of whole situation is, uh, where I'm going tomorrow, what I'm doing tomorrow. I know you've probably guessed part of it, but there's a bit more to it and it's slightly complicated. Oh my goodness. For a layover and like a airport transit hotel, that was very nice indeed. Oh, well, this works out pretty well. Turns out that the airport hotel is just a five minute walk from the gate. We are flying today to Doha in Qatar on, wait for it, Q Suites. My face shield ready to go. I've got my boarding passes. That was not uh, straightforward because they were very confused at what I was doing. Uh, not really. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Have a nice Welcome on board. This is my suite today, 5A. Look at that. So let's get settled in. The other good thing as well is that they have upgraded their champagne. So now you get some LP Rosé, which uh, I will have in a moment, <laughs> hashtag slammer time. The other thing to know today is we are on the 777, and this is a converted plane that has now got the key suites in place. After chatting to the cabin crew about my filming today, they suggested I try out the Q Suites mini cabin. Basically, an entire section of business class was free for me to experience all the different suites and most importantly, the double bed. I told you we were in for a treat today. Seeing as today's flight is pretty much empty, I thought it would be a good opportunity for you guys to see the sort of different seating variants that you get. So, let's check it out. Of course, first of all, we're in the very famous, and you've probably seen it, of course you'll have seen it from the thumbnail, but you've probably seen it quite a lot on Instagram. This is the famed double bed. Or it can also be made into a quad suite. So what I mean by that is those two panels there go down and reveal, essentially, you can sit opposite two other people, say your family or friends, and you can all experience a privacy with all four of you. It's pretty cool. Of course, here you can see the other half of the quad, and you see they don't make up into a double bed. They're slightly further away from each other. Uh, this is obviously so that you can keep them as singular because you don't really want to be that close if you don't know the person. As you can see here again, that's the double, double key suite. So double key suite, and this is the quad. Then you have the two different types of seats. You have one here, which uh, the seat is closest to the aisle. It's not quite as, uh, as private, it's a bit more exposed, but of course you've still got the door. Still very nice. And then secondly, you've got this. This is my favorite seat on board. This is reverse, obviously reverse seating. Uh, and the great thing about it is the view that you get. So as you can see here, the view out over the wing. And of course, as with all of these suites, the door fully closes. Right, let's order some food. This is another great feature on Qatar where you can dine on demand. Well, in contrast to Turkish, Qatar still provide full food service, the exception being it's served on one tray and individually covered. For starter, I have the Arabic meze, followed by the tortellini, all washed down with some more LP. Oh, and to finish, some Godiva chocolates. And in case you're wondering, it was all fabulous. As we start to make our approach, that flight literally flew by. Sorry, horrible pun, but it really did. So enjoyable. We're just coming into our descent. I think we're about 16 minutes out of Doha. I thought I'd show you a little change of scenery for landing, being like I spent most of the flight in a double bed, because why wouldn't you? I mean, it's genuinely one of the most unique features of any aircraft. It's why Qatar calls itself the Q Suites is first in business, and you can see why. It is welcome to Qatar, well, specifically Doha International Airport. It's time to have some dinner. The plan is to go in the business class lounge, because obviously my flight is tomorrow. So hopefully they should let me in, and I should be able to have a relatively nice dinner. My old Mujan lounge. So let's go up here. Let's see what it's like.
This is very fancy. Now I have been here before, but I'm actually fascinated to see how it's changed. There's a buffet upstairs. We'll have a look in a minute down here because this is super special. It's like a massive like <laughs> lake in the lounge. By the way, side note guys, I'm fully aware that this is incredibly creased, but it's been in my bag for the last three days and there's not much else I can do. Probably should try and get it ironed, but whatever. Cheers. So they serve a very tasty rosé tattinger champagne in the lounge. That is absolutely wonderful. Let's tuck in. I've got a starter. We kind of have a similar theme to earlier on. I've gone with a meze, so I've got some hummus, some tabula, and beef salad with some pizza as well. For me, I grabbed penne arabiata and spiced Arabic lamb. I'll tell you what. After a few days on the road, it feels good to have something really fresh, really tasty, like, feels like it's doing me some good. Right, hotel. One six five. Wow, check this out. This is pretty nice. Shall we see what the view is? And I can take that off now. Oh, I don't know how many of you have travelled so far for a prolonged period of time. Oh, but my goodness, it is uh, strange keeping that mask on for so long. Would you look at that? Like you can just see the top of Teddy. Terminal. Swimming pool. Usually it would be open, but obviously due to the current situation it's not. Seven o'clock, boarding is at ten past seven. That is the benefit of being at an airport hotel. As I was alluding to yesterday, we are obviously flying again today and we're back on Q Suites, but we're on a much longer flight today. Over to Frankfurt, 7.55. Departing Doha, everyone has to wear a shield whilst boarding the plane. Interestingly, business class are exempt from wearing this on board. Kind of makes sense to have this, right? Is it too early at 8 o'clock? Never too early. The other thing that's cool today is I have got a gift. So, a happy eat to all of my followers. How cool is that? I think they're like little pastries. So I thought very briefly, I would show you guys what you get in your suite. Now obviously this is slightly different to yesterday's flight, whereas obviously today is classed as long haul. You get a menu card, and today we have breakfast, because it's obviously morning, so I look forward to trying that. I'll go through that with you guys later. Obviously you've been provided with a drink, straight up. Got to get on that, lovely. And then we've got an amenity kit as well. They use bricks amenity, or uh, like comforter just there. Some hand gel. Protective gear, so that's like another mask and some gloves. Oh, you've got a wine list as well, just here. With it now, you get to enjoy. After yet another glass of champagne, it's time for pushback. The safety video is screened and we taxied over to the runway. No wait time today and we were airborne. Time for brekkie. I started with a smoothie followed by an Arabic kofta, pita, with a rich spiced tomato sauce. It's now time to attempt the infamous stone test. Premise being, if the butter is too hard and stays on the knife while being raised, it's a fail. And today, I unfortunately got a fail. So make sure you check out my friend Greg's IG, best in-flight photos in the game. You get provided with white company pajamas to change. I feel like they might have provided a slightly too big, still, feels well. We've done it again. We have got a pretty much completely empty cabin. Now, of course, this is reflective of fewer people are traveling, but what it does demonstrate is how incredible Qatar's product is. First of all, let's waste no time by saying cheers. I really didn't expect to have the double bed set up on both flights. Not having experienced it properly before, 
it's really special. I guess it's just so roomy, and obviously it's just me today, but if you were traveling with a partner or a friend, and it is just like one of those things that you just don't really get in many other products in the sky. One thing I found pretty congruent on all of the Qatar flights that I've been on is the crew are fantastic. They're really encouraging on taking photos. In fact, the crew were lovely today and suggested that we make this up so that I could get some really cool photos and obviously to enjoy it as well. So kudos to the crew on board today. They have been absolutely fantastic. Do let me know in the comments below, what, what Q suite would you go for? Would you go for the double? Would you go for the single one by the window? What would you prefer? I'm glad to say. Welcome back to Germany, I guess. Thank you so much for coming along. I hope you've enjoyed the journey. It's certainly cool to see what Q suites are like. My conclusion being the best business class still to this day. One of the best airlines that's handling the current situation at hand. With that said, plenty more coming up on the channel over the next few weeks. Do make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already and drop me a comment below what you thought. Make sure you smash the like button as well. I'll catch you guys again very soon. Cheers.